Okay, well, I'm here on the beach. I've got my rods out there. People popping up all around me. So I've got big baits out there. And I've got a uh, small white bait, I'll show you later on, that I got down on another beach. Frozen, I was going to use them in the boat, but I'm just going to throw them out and see what comes along. And a few ragworm, which I'm going to save for the evening. But I'd just like to show you, because I'm always trying to show people in foreign countries the pinches on the ragworm. But I've got some frozen rag left over, and I've got some fresh, I'll show you the difference. You actually see horrendous fangs that come out. So here is some live ragworm, okay? It's left over from a trip I was at yesterday. But they do have pinches here at the front, and they will give you a nip. You can see this one's wiggling away pretty feisty there. But it's always difficult to film it. Well, I've got some frozen ones. They don't freeze well. I've just changed the paper in these this morning to keep them dry just enough to get me through today, or this evening, or this afternoon. It's really just... In fairness, I'm just actually waiting till, uh, till the evening. But I've got some frozen ones from a previous trip there that I was going to use boat fishing. I've actually chucked a couple out really close to see if there's any dabs or flounders around. But I can show you the fangs, the pinches on the end, which they extend out and grab their prey with within the seabed. Well, the tide is a ripping, people. Um, don't know, maybe I should be bringing my rods in, but I've put my little bivvy, put my little beach buddy thing up behind, trying to keep the wind up, because it's just northerly wind. And they say it's going to be six degrees below freezing tonight in the north of England, and at least one degree or two degrees down here in our soft old southerners. So, nothing you can do, I just sit here, but it's a pleasure in the sunshine at the moment. But I was out last night, and as soon as that sun touched the horizon, the temperature just fell away. Within 15, 20 minutes, I noticed it. And I didn't put up my little shelter, but it just keeps the air flow off you. But in the sunshine, it's lovely. I just wish there was a fish. More breeze than I thought, and more tide than I thought. I'm looking for one catch and cook. That's all I want for a nice fish and chip supper. <coughs> sun's going down boys it's about the best chance we're going to get is when it gets dark it's trying to get a fish if I can but at the moment not one bite but what a setting
Well, people, it's been a while coming. Been a long time coming. But this is what I call a decent fish that saves a day. Nice big dogfish. He could fight all the way to the frying pan. Anyway, we'll be dying of starvation tonight. This is what they make fish and chips out of, guys. So I'm going to take some home. I can probably have some of this now. But, of course, I've got to get bait in the water again. ASAP. Oh, I can taste it already. Just had a uh, head of a bang on this rod after I had that doggy. Don't know if he's dropped it. No, he's not dropped it. Let's hang on, guys. I'm going to keep this up. Yeah. There we go. Another dogfish. This one's on there. Uh, it's like straight ragworm. This one's on. He is very lively. So you can see him. A little bit of squid tipped on the end there. Hopefully you can see that one I'll turn the light off. So just nicked in the bottom jaw there. Turns into a good session. I only need one. That's all I've got. And this one's going to go back. Where are we? Now I'm going to skin the other one. I'll show you what to do in a minute. But I won't be showing it. Obviously with the Snowflake Society of today. They will die of starvation because they don't know how to skin a dogfish and you won't be eating these guys whole, I can assure you. This is a tip if you, if you bend their tails around like this, you can hold the tail here and the head and you can unhook them. Otherwise what they do is wrap the tail around the back of your hands and make it really, really rough scratch and it's a real pain, literally, when you're in the shower washing. Let's get this one back. Well, I just come in with a spinning rod, boys. I did actually see a bite earlier on. And look what we got here. Hey, how a day turns around. As soon as it gets dark. Nice little bass. Now, over here in the UK at the moment, A, it's undersized. B, you can't keep any bass anyway. This is the, you know, I don't have a problem with that because I don't even, I don't even like eating bass, to be honest. I'd sooner catch a place any time. He's got his fins up for you. Nice little bass on worm. Let's get him back. This is lucky day. I'm not even hungry. I don't even like eating bass, I've got to be honest, really not. Hugely, hugely, I think they're a hugely overrated thing. Thing? Fish. And of course they are now called sea bass. Makes them worth more. Okay people, well I've prepped this fish, skinned it, and this is what it looks like. It looks like Nothing you've ever seen before. I'm going to cut that in half because it's more than enough for me to eat tonight and I'll have some tomorrow. Now generally, fish like this bull hus dogfish, or what we used to call fish and chips years ago, hus and chips, used to be bull hus and chips. And it's got a cartilage down the middle there. It doesn't have loads of rib bones and cage, cages like that thing, you know, bone-wise. It has one central cartilage. And when cooked, we used to give it to our jack muscle because dogs can eat it, they can crunch it right up. So I'm going to cut this in half. So that's just pure, whoops, pure meat. You can see that, pure meat. Generally, I would leave it in the fridge overnight because the saying is they've got ammonia in them. You need to let the ammonia come out. But I'm going to cook this anyway, um, certainly half of it. And they say it can give you a headache or this look, it could be a load of old wise towels or it could make you sleepy. We'll find out, won't we? But I'm going to put this in and I'm also going to use all these with me if I can get them to work. Sliced up parboiled potatoes right there and I'll try and get those fried up as well and with me I've got a marinade or butter olive oil oregano garlic salt and pepper mixed up in there fingers crossed if I don't get any more bites I'll get something on the cook here I've got a very dirty bait knife a partially filthy dirty bait knife and a pen knife out of my pocket, so I figure I ought to slice a potato up with my pen knife. Put 
everything in there for now. Oh, it's lovely in there. Now, cut this in half. You can snap the back of these easily. a nice bit of cross contamination. In it goes. I've got a little bit extra uh, oil in there because I allowed for the potatoes which I figured might soak it up. Oh you can smell that. Get that gas heated up there. We get these chips going in first. I'm going to call them chips. Good job I've got the big camera right. I'm going to say, I'm going to be eating like a king tonight. The Beach King. And there's a the fish. That's the only clean blade I've got. Oh, that smells unbelievable. Worst comes to the worst people. <laughs> I can eat. The, I can eat the chips and throw the throw the fish away. I won't be doing that. This is for the chefs amongst you. This is my hand white rag covered in uh, dogfish vomit, dead ragworm, squid, uh, soot from the chimney, everything. So don't worry about a little bit of bacteria, guys. Cavemen all survived, didn't they? Now, in here I believe I've actually got cutlery, camping cutlery. This is as close to bushcraft as it gets. I'm just going to dab off any surplus water in that uh, of the dogfish yet. You can see it. I'll leave it in that to soak up. So this other one I'm going to keep and that's going to go back. I'll have that tomorrow. A big mistake I made this smells so good people is I should have bought some bread shouldn't I just to dip in that juice because I bet with all that butter garlic everything in there I bet it's really nice wow it smells good it certainly smells good and of course these potatoes are cooked I'll tell you what they are they were last night's meal, so I was out beach fishing last night, got back too late. The wife left me a meal. It was like steak, kidney pie, um, carrots, boiled potatoes. But because I ate fish on the beach, I didn't want any food, so I got a real rocket when I came in. I said, no, no don't waste it, don't waste it, I'm going to cook with it, so that's what I'm doing now. You can see what I mean about the pan. Just getting it dead level. A little bit too big. I'm going to put this fish in now. It's quite thick. Let's see how we get on with it. Turf these to the edge. That's it. Fish has gone in. I think that's the hottest part of the pan now. So this is what we would call fish and chips, but it's fish and chips, totally awesome style. One day I'm going to cook this microphone lead. Right, I'm going to switch that battery off guys and get back to you.
when it's a little bit further up the road. Don't want to run out of battery. You can see those chips look absolutely really nice. And the fish is cooked as well. It's got all the spices and that all over it there. So just give it one more turn. Oh, it's falling off. Look, it's absolutely falling off. I can't even turn it. And those chips are done to a turn, as they say. Right, I'm going to let this cool off a bit. And then it's yum yum time. And rods are motionless up there. Well, nice to get that bass anyway. The gas is off. Nobody ever say I have any fear of dying of starvation when I'm fishing. The thing is, the secret is really, look, in that, the secret is in skinning the doggy, the old doggy, the dogfish. You need to skin them. We got it in one of our beach films, I think. But now, it's Nambyville out there. You're not allowed to show that. Oh no, it's graphic content. That's okay, it's graphic, but I survive and the snowflakes won't. All the more for me. <laughs> I should have bought some vinegar. Those chips are very hot. <laughs> Look guys, let me just show you what this flakes off like. Look, it just flakes off. Oh. Falling off the bone, look, I can rake it off. I can remember eating this as a kid years ago like this. My mum used to get me huss and chips like this. It was all the rage in the 50s and 60s. And the reason for that is I think because there's no bones in it, just that one central cartilage. And because, I mean, wife is good books, because I've now haven't wasted her dinner that she cooked me, because I ate the pie cold at lunchtime. Oh. I'll see you guys in a little while. Well, the other bonuses, guys. Old Puffin Billy's on the go here. And that means I can get in the warm. And although it is sort of back to front, as it were, <laughs> there's so much steam there. Let's turn that off. I can finish off after my main course. Of course, I should have had soup to start, but one has to catch a fish to start with a very nice tomato soup. This is survival cooking backwards. We're having the starter to finish. In fact, I'm really sort of having the starter to dessert, aren't I? Fish, fish and chips, finishing off with a very nice tomato soup. <sighs> Rods are still okay, I feel. After this, I might get one more fish. If not, it's time to call it quits. It's getting very, very cold. This is going to warm me up. And then, it sounds like somebody's swimming out there. Somebody in a boat by the sound, that's madness. There we go, let's let that cool off. Guys, as if it doesn't get any better than fish and chips on the beach, I'm coming in, just about to have one more cast. I thought I'd just wind in and change worms. I got the ultimate flatfish, the ultimate eating fish. Do you know what it is? Let me show you. I think it's what it is. I haven't looked myself yet, I've got it just on the beach here, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a Dover sole, a black sole, a lemon sole, I don't care. I don't catch many of these guys, I can assure you. This is rated as about one of the best eating fish you can get apparently, and they're very, very expensive. I'll tell you what, I, I can't tell you the last one I caught, it was tiny. This is, this could be my PB sole. But, I don't know what the size limit on sole. I have no intention of keeping him. I'm going to put him back. I'll show you the underneath of a very, very, very long fish, look. A long flat fish, can you see that? No need for that. You're famous, you're a famous sole. Funny, tiny little mouth, and it's probably because I've got ragworm on a very, very small hook that I've got this guy. 
just nicked there. This one, I've got to have another car, so I've got to. What a little session it's turned into. All these culinary fish I'm catching and not eating. Well, guys, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show once again. I'll put this out for you. Hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Because if I'm pumping different films at you in the week, if you don't hit the notification bell, you're going to miss like several films in a row. It's not always just Friday, it's just how I fancy putting the films up. And of course, how many films I've got backed up, which is quite a lot. Anyway, I enjoyed that catch and cook. Fish and chips on the beach doesn't get any better than that coastal grub. You can't beat it. Certainly won't catch a fresher one than that, I'm sure. Pleased with the soul. I think I've pretty well had it now. It's dead tide. Got to pack out. I've got a long drive home. So I've enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Give it a go cooking and eating fish. I mean, it is. Sea fish is the best ones to eat. Don't eat the freshwater ones. They're yucky and muddy. We'll see you next time and hit Mike's TA Outdoors. Go across and have a look. There's always something of interest on there. Seeing what he's building. And uh, hit the notification bell. And we'll see you in the next episode. Before my fingers drop off totally. It's cold. Last wind in boys. And a nice big dogfish. And I had pouting on the last small winding as well on the small hooks. So he's knotted himself up. There he is. He's safe this time. I'm satiated on dogfish. Nice size ones, I have to say. They're pretty good size ones, as you can see. Right, it really is. Cheerio. That's a nice fish. I don't know what to say, people. <laughs> a little bit bigger than the last one. It's another bass. You've got to love it, haven't you? You've got to love it. There he is. He's got his fin up. Quite a long fish, that one. So, what a session.